would see how precious you would be. God knew your name, and he held you so close in his loving hand, and he wanted all to see that before the light of day shined on your little face, God knew your name. Before you walked around, before you first fell down, God knew your name. Before you rode your trike, and then that first red bike, God knew your name. He was with you every day, right there by your side. Even when you made mistakes, and before the light of day shined on your little face, God knew your name. first new home and children of your own God knew your name Good morning I'd like to be in the Lord's house with you today Happy Father's Day to all you fathers out there. I hope you uh, have wonderful plans for today. Or just to thank the Lord, sit inside where it's air-conditioned, and be comfortable. Uh, it was a little bit warmer out in Mongo than it is here this morning, so I'm very thankful that we have air conditioning here. Uh, a couple reminders. Uh, vacation Bible School registration is still open this week. Uh, if you're planning on sending your children, please register so they can order t-shirts for them. Uh, that's very important. Uh, and then there's a planning meeting for VBS as well on the 25th uh, at 6.30 uh, here at church. Uh, choir practice. Yes, I almost got the love in there. It's right there too, choir, but it's in pencil. Uh, it's harder to see. Uh, choir, you will be practicing immediately following the service today uh, to sing next week. Uh, so thank you for that. Uh, Next week is my last Sunday here. Uh, we'll talk about that next week, but uh, uh, we're going to have some fellowship after church next Sunday, so please plan on coming and staying for that. I apologize, I lied last week. I said the parking lot would be ready this Sunday, but God had other plans, I think, with all the water and stuff, so uh, parking is a premium. I had to trek from the Clemkin, so I know what their commute's like on Sunday, so <laughs> kind of fun. Um, I think that's it. Uh, we have a baptism today. What a joy that is to welcome someone into God's kingdom and to see that word grow. Keep that in mind. That was a little sermon teaser there to keep the word growing. Uh, and we gather at his table once again to receive the blessings of his body and blood. Uh, our of service will be divine service setting three in our first hymn, 901. Open now thy gates of beauty. Uh, blessings to all of you this day as we worship.
invite the congregation to turn to page 268 in your hymnals as we have the sacrament of holy baptism. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Beloved in the Lord Christ, our Lord says in the last chapter of Matthew, All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Therefore, go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. In the last chapter of Mark, our Lord promises, whoever believes and is baptized will be saved. And the Apostle Peter has written, Baptism now saves you. The Word of God also teaches that we are all conceived and born sinful and are under the power of the devil until Christ claims us as his own. We would be lost forever unless delivered from sin, death, and everlasting condemnation. But the Father of all mercy and grace has sent his Son, Jesus Christ, who atoned for the sin of the whole world, that whoever believes in him should not perish, but have eternal life. And in Jesus' merit, receive the sign of the open cross, both upon your forehead and upon your heart, to mark you as one redeemed by Christ the crucified. Let us pray. Almighty and eternal God, according to your strict judgment, you condemned the unbelieving world through the flood. Yet according to your great mercy, you preserved believing Noah and his family, eight souls in all. You drowned hard-hearted Pharaoh and all his host in the Red Sea, yet led your people Israel through the water on dry ground, foreshadowing this washing of your holy baptism. Through the baptism in the Jordan of your beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, you sanctified and instituted all waters to be a blessed flood and a lavish washing away of sin. We pray that you would behold Kennedy according to your boundless mercy and bless her with the true faith by the Holy Spirit, that through this saving flood all sin in her which has been inherited from Adam and which she herself has committed would be drowned and die. Grant that she be kept safe and secure in the holy ark of the Christian church, being separated from the multitude of unbelievers, and serving your name at all times with a fervent spirit and a joyful hope, so that with all believers in your promise, she would be declared worthy of eternal life. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. From ancient times, the church has observed the custom of appointing sponsors for baptismal candidates and catechumens, in the Evangelical Lutheran Church, sponsors are to confess the faith expressed in the Apostles' Creed and taught in the small catechism. They are, whenever possible, to witness the baptism of those they sponsor. They are to pray for them, support them in their ongoing instruction and nurture in the Christian faith, and encourage them toward the faithful reception of the Lord's Supper. They are, at all times, to be examples to them of the holy life of faith in Christ and love for neighbor. Is it your intention to serve Ken and Gina's sponsors in the Christian faith? If so, then answer by saying yes with the help of God. God enable you both to will and to do this faithful and loving work, and with his grace fulfill what we are enabled to do. Amen. We hear the Holy Gospel according to St. Mark. They brought young, Jesus, young children to Jesus that he might touch them, but the disciples rebuked those who brought them. But when Jesus saw he was greatly displeased and said to them, let the little children come to me, and do not forbid them, for of such is the kingdom of God. For surely I say to you, whoever does not receive the kingdom of God as a little child will by no means enter. And he took them up in his hand, arms, put his hands on them, and blessed them. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let us stand together as we pray the Lord's prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Because this child cannot answer for herself, we shall all, together with sponsors and parents, faithfully speak on her behalf in the testimony of the forgiveness of sin and the birth of the life of faith which God our Father bestows in and through baptism. Kennedy Jean Becker, do you renounce the devil? Yes, I renounce him. You renounce all his works? Yes, I renounce You renounce all his ways? Yes, I renounce do you believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth? Yes, I believe. Do you believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who
who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. Yes, I believe. Do you believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting? Yes, I believe. The Almighty God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has given you the new birth of water and the Spirit, has forgiven you all your sins, strengthen you with his grace to life everlasting. Amen. Receive this burning light to show that you have received Christ who is the light of the world. Live always in the light of Christ. And be ever watchful for his coming, that you may meet him with joy and enter with him into the marriage feast of the Lamb and his kingdom, which shall have no end. In holy baptism, God the Father has made you a member of his Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, and an heir with us of all the treasures of heaven in the one holy Christian and apostolic church. We receive you in Jesus' name as our sister in Christ, that together we might hear his word, receive his gifts, and proclaim the praises of him who called us out of darkness into his marvelous light. Amen. Amen. We welcome you in the name of the Lord. Let us pray. Almighty and most merciful God and Father, we thank and praise you that you graciously preserve and enlarge your family and have granted Kenneth Jean the new birth and holy baptism and made her a member of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, and an heir of your heavenly kingdom. We humbly implore you that as she has now become your child, you would keep her in her baptism and grace that according to your good pleasure, she may faithfully grow to lead a godly life to the praise and honor of your holy name, and finally with all your saints, obtain the promised inheritance in heaven through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And you, Ken Jean, the Lord bless you in all your ways from this time forth, and even forevermore. Amen. We continue with our baptismal hymn, I was there to hear your morning cry. <laughs>
Beloved in the Lord, let us draw near with a true heart and confess our sins unto God our Father, beseeching him in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ to grant us forgiveness. Our help is in the name of the Lord. I said I will confess my transgressions unto the Lord. O Almighty God, merciful Father, I, the poor and miserable sinner, confess unto you all my sins and iniquities, which I have never offended you, and justly deserve your salvation for my punishment. But I am heartily sorry for them, and sincerely repent of them, and I pray you of your boundless mercy, and for the sake of the holy innocence and bitter sufferings of death, of your beloved Son, Jesus Christ. Upon this your confession, I by virtue of my office as a called and ordained servant of the word announce the grace of God unto all of you. And in this stead and by the command of my Lord Jesus Christ, I forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Continue as we sing responsibly to enjoy. <clears throat> It is good to give thanks to the Lord. The righteous flourish like the palm tree. They are planted in the house of the Lord. They still bear fruit in old age. that the Lord is upright. He is my God, and there is all righteousness in It is good to give thanks to the Lord.
since you have caused all holy scriptures to be written for our learning, grant that we may so hear them, read, mark, learn, and inwardly digest them, that we may embrace and ever hold fast the blessed hope of everlasting life. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Thus says the Lord God, I myself will take a sprig from the lofty top of the cedar and will set it out. I will break off from the topmost of its young twigs a tender one, and I myself will plant it on a high and lofty mountain. On the mountain height of Israel will I plant it, that it may bear branches and produce fruit and become a noble cedar. And under it will dwell every kind of bird. In the shade of its branches, birds of every sort will nest. And all the trees of the field shall know that I am the Lord. I bring low the high tree and make high the low tree. Dry up the green tree and make the dry tree flourish. I am the Lord. I have spoken and I will do it. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The epistle reading from 2 Corinthians chapter 5. We know that if the tent, which is our earthly home, is destroyed, we have a building from God. A house not made with hands, eternal in the heavens. For in this tent we groan, longing to put on our heavenly dwelling. If indeed by putting it on we may not be found naked. For while we are still in this tent we groan, being burdened. Not that we would be unclothed, but that we would be further clothed. So that what is mortal may be swallowed up by life. He who has prepared us for this very thing is God. Who has given us the spirit as a guarantee. So we are always in good courage. We know that while we are at home in the body, we are away from the Lord. For we walk by faith, not by sight. Yes, we are aware of good courage, and we would rather be away from the body and at home with the Lord. So whether we are at home or away, we make it our aim to please Him. For we must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ, so that each one may receive what is due for what he has done in the body, whether good or evil. Therefore, knowing the fear of the Lord, we persuade others, but what we are is known to God, and I hope it is known also to your conscience. We are not commending ourselves to you again, but giving you cause to boast about us, that you may be able to answer those who boast about outward appearance, and not what about is in the heart. For if we are beside ourselves, it is for God. If we are in our right mind, it is for you. For the love of Christ controls us, because we have concluded this that one has died for all, therefore all have died. And he died for all that those who live might no longer live for themselves, but for him who for their sake died and was raised. From now on, therefore, we regard no one according to the flesh, even though we once regarded Christ according to the flesh. We regard him thus no longer. Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. The old has passed away. Behold, the new has come. This is the word of the Lord. Be to God. Let us stand together as we sing the Alleluia and hear the gospel. The Holy Gospel according to St. Mark, the fourth chapter. The kingdom of God is as if a man should scatter seed on the ground. He sleeps and rises night and day, and the seed sprouts and grows. He knows not how. The earth produces by itself first the blade, then the ear, then the full grain in the ear. But when the grain is ripe, at once he puts in the sickle because the harvest has come. And he said, With what can we compare the kingdom of God, or what parable shall we use for it? It is like a grain of mustard seed, which when sown on the ground is the smallest of all the seeds on the earth. Yet, when it is sown, it grows up and becomes larger than all the garden plants and puts out large branches, so that the birds of the air can make nests in its shade. With many such parables he spoke the word to them 
and they were able to hear it. He did not speak to them without a parable, but privately to his disciples he explained everything. This is the Gospel of the Lord. We confess our faith together using the words of the Nicene Creed. I believe in one God, the Father seated our next hymn 500 creator spirit by whose aid 500 Grace, mercy, and peace to you from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Dear brothers and sisters in Christ, I start this morning with a ridiculous question. Yes, this is going to be a ridiculous question. Have you ever planted a seed and 
hoped it didn't grow. Probably not, right? It's ridiculous. We plant seeds. We want to watch what we plant grow. It's how it is with God and his word, right? The seeds we heard about in the reading. He wants those seeds planted, yes, by pastors preaching his word, by you, his people, speaking his word. He wants those seeds to, to bear fruit, to bear fruit in the hearts and lives of those who hear it. But how that happens, when that happens, where that happens, how much it happens and how big it happens, that's out of our control. It's out of our control and it's out of our understanding. Right? Sometimes we know why those seeds and plants, we know why they don't grow, right? We can see that or why they don't produce fruit. This is the point of some of the parables Jesus told right before the ones we heard today, right? We know why, because sometimes the cares of this world, it, it chokes the seed of its, its word. Or the trials and the troubles of this life, they, they scorch it. Or the temptations of Satan simply just pluck it out of the ground. Now you've probably experienced all those things in your own life. Sitting in church, hearing the word, but at times your mind is a thousand miles away, worrying, obsessing, preoccupied with something else. And, and the seed, it, the seed of the word, it just bounces off your ears, your heart, and your mind, or it's plucked or scorched. Today, though, today is about how and where and why it does grow. Not about why it doesn't, about how and where and why it does. And it, it does quite well, apart from our efforts of what you and I do. Now, be sure, there are things we can do to help the seed grow, right? We plow the ground, we try to plant the seeds properly, we try to control the weeds and the pests, and we apply fertilizer, but none of that, none of that makes the seed grow. That happens quite apart from us. In fact, right, you can do everything right, everything, and have nothing grow. Or you wind up with some seeds that come up and some that don't, and, and you wonder why, right? Well, that was from the same bag of seeds in the same garden. I gave it the same care. Why didn't all of it come up? What happened? And then the plants that do, right? Some produce a lot of fruit, some not so much. Why is that? Again, it's, it's out of our control. It's beyond our understanding. It's the same way with the kingdom of God and the seed of his word. The parables spoken to us today, they're, they're not a call to action, right? What to do and how to do it to get the kingdom of God to grow. No, it's, it's rather for us, it's a call for us to trust that it's God's kingdom. It's God's seed. It's God's growth. Only he can do it. Which, that's hard for me as times as a pastor, and I'm sure it's hard for you as well to have that trust. It's all about God. right? It's hard to trust when, when all we really want to do is roll up our sleeves and, and get to work and do what we want to do to get these seeds to grow, to get people to come to church and while as Christians, we don't do nothing, right? We still speak God's word. We still plant that seed. It's what he calls us to do. But we also can't make it grow. So we're called to patience and trust that, that maybe, right? Maybe, just maybe God knows what he's doing, right? And maybe, just maybe, not necessarily what we may think or what we may do. That moving fast enough is God's seeds growing fast enough. 
certainly doesn't seem like that in the world today, does it? It certainly doesn't seem like it. It's frustrating or disappointing. I mean, if you're like me, right, you'd rather be in control, wouldn't you? Let the kingdom of God grow how and where and when I want it to. Like, like here, right? Yeah. Almost nine years ago, I came and I thought, hey, if I had my way, we would have pews filled each and every Sunday. School overflowing. But here we are. It's not as I had planned. It's not as... I had thought it's all about God and what he's done. And so maybe at times we blame ourselves, right? Oh, I didn't do this right, or I didn't do that right, or I didn't do enough of this or too much of that. But while there is surely much we don't do right or things we could have done better, it may just be that God's time is different than our time. Right? Scripture tells us that his ways are not our ways. His thoughts are not our thoughts. But you see, the kingdom of God has grown. It has grown here. Many people have, have come and gone and heard the word of the Lord. Maybe they grew here. Maybe they will grow someplace else. But the growth of the church, it's not the same as the growth of the kingdom of God. Right? Individual churches, they grow, they shrink, they open, they close, they come and go. But the kingdom of God, no, the kingdom of God, no, it lasts forever. It's bigger than any one church. Or one country, for that fact. I mean, think about the United States. The church and its influence seems to be declining, doesn't it? Wherever you look, the church is less looked upon than it was years ago. Think about Africa, where, where it flourished in the early church. Thousands of years ago, the, some of our great early church fathers were great theologians from northern Africa, but, but then they suffered under the smothering conquest of Islam. But, but it's growing again. South America, it's growing. But in Europe, right, the heart of Lutheranism, right? Germany, Martin Luther, the 95 Thesis in Europe, it seems to be largely ignored. And tragically, many of those huge, beautiful, glorious churches sit almost empty on a Sunday morning. And it's hard. It's hard to understand that, isn't it? Why some grow and others don't? Why over there and, and not here? The seed sprouts and grows. He knows not how. Yeah. We don't know how. We're simply called to, to trust in God, to have that humility and patience that it's, that it's God's seed, right? It's God's kingdom. It's God's growth. It, it's not ours. And we pray that in the Lord's prayer, thy kingdom come, and, and we mean it. How and where and when he decides. And into that kingdom, into his kingdom, each and every one of you has been brought. The seed planted. Planted as we celebrate today by a faithful father or a faithful mother bringing you to the waters of baptism. Like we saw Kenna Jean this morning. Or a faithful father, mother, friend, spouse that spoke the word of God to you. A seed that, that grew that God caused to grow. Maybe you've planted those seeds through your words. You just haven't seen the growth that you want to see. And it just doesn't seem to be working, right? But the how, the when, and, and the where, it's not up to you and I. We're simply called to trust, to have that humility and patience that 
God indeed knows what he's doing. To trust that our Heavenly Father wants all those seeds to grow. That he's always working for the good of all people. To have that humility that, that we don't know and that we don't understand that our, everything that our Heavenly Father is doing. And to have that patience. Yeah, that's the hard one. Especially for me. I'll be honest with you. I don't have that patience. To have that patience that we may plant that seed, but we may never see it grow. It may happen after we're gone. It may happen years down the road. I mean, imagine the, the children of Israel. Imagine Adam and Eve being promised a, a Savior and waiting and waiting. And God telling Abraham, you're... You will number like the stars in the heavens and waiting and waiting. Throughout the Old Testament, no, some, a Savior's coming, a Savior's coming. As they looked forward to that Savior. And he finally came. Many didn't know who he was, but were saved by faith in that belief. We have the joy of looking back at the cross and saying, yes, there is God for me. Believing. His word, his seed will always do the best. Don't ever underestimate what you do. Don't ever underestimate the seeds that, that you plant. Don't ever give up. It may seem pretty small. It may seem insignificant at the time, right? What you do, how you do it. But remember that gospel reading, a tiny mustard seed. You ever held one of those in your fingers you can't really hold it in your hand it's going to blow away you got to kind of put it between two fingers what that one tiny mustard seed can do what god is able to accomplish with so little yes it's it's for us to plant to speak the word it, it's for god to grant the growth and he's doing that He's tending us. He's granting us growth. Maybe we don't always feel it. Maybe we don't always see it. Maybe we don't always understand it. But we're not called to those things. We're simply called to trust and be humble and be patient. The seed, the word, the word does its work. The word that called all things into being in the beginning. The word that became flesh and dwelt among us and redeemed all creation from sin. The word proclaimed, the word poured, the word fed to us here. And the word that will call us out of our graves on the last day to everlasting life. Yes, the word, it's, it's living, it, it's active, it's powerful, it's working. We may not know how, we may not understand, but God our Father in heaven does. And he is working in us and and in this world, and the kingdom is growing. Just as we saw this morning, as Ken and Jean came in to God's kingdom through the waters of holy baptism, a seed is sprouting and growing. Trust, humility, and patience that God is working and continues to work, and that seed continues to grow each and every day. Amen. The peace of God, the peace that surpasses all human understanding, keep your hearts and minds in and through Christ Jesus your Lord. Amen. Let us stand together as we continue as we sing the offertory.
now as we gather our offerings. Stand together as we continue with the prayer. <coughs> oh, gracious Heavenly Father, we give thanks to you that you have planted your holy word among us. Give healthy growth to your church that she may weather the storm winds of this world steadfast in Christ, ever bearing the fruits of love and singing praises to your name. Lord, in your mercy. Lord God, your Holy Spirit plants your word and causes it to sprout and grow as it pleases you. Bless the preaching and teaching of your word, that your kingdom may be extended. And give us thankful hearts to marvel at your work. Send faithful labors into your fields to scatter your seed here and abroad, that in due time a harvest may be reaped for your glory. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. O God, we groan under the many burdens in this earthly tent and long to be clothed with your eternal life, which will swallow up all mortal sorrow. Give courage to all your servants. We list before you, especially this day, Joanne, Fred, Thomas, Daryl, Leroy, Greg, Al, Wilbert, Jim, Dale, Steve, Laura, Larry, Reverend Shack, Marlis, Sandra, and Harley. Give them courage to walk by faith and not by sight. If it please you, bring them to full recovery while they are here in the body. Keep us all safe. Lord, in your mercy. Heavenly Father, from whom all fatherhood is named, we give you thanks for earthly fathers. Give them confidence in their station and zeal for their task to care for their families faithfully. Make them examples to their children of godly life and love of your word. Bless their work of bringing up children in the fear and instruction of the Lord, and give them the comfort of your absolution over their shortcomings. Lord, in your mercy. This and all that is upon our hearts, we lift before you this day in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, 
now and forever. Amen. The Lord be with you. shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Amen. 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 Maybe our closing hymn 894 for the fruits of his creation 894.